If you're watching this on October 1, then you already know it's Nigeria's Independence Day anniversary. In 1960, October 1, Nigerians were jubilating. Why? Britain said she had granted the most popular black country independence. But in real terms, was Nigeria really independent at the time? Think about it. The Queen was still head of state, and Namdi Azikwe, who we all hail as Nigeria's first indigenous governor general, was a mere puppet, serving the Queen's purpose. At least not until 1963, when Nigeria evolved into a republic when it no longer needed to keep addressing the Queen on the state of the nation. Now you're wondering, did Nigeria really gain independence in 1960? You're welcome to Info Boss Stop YouTube channel, where we keep you up to date with the latest news trends and info in Nigeria and Africa. If you're new to this channel, do consider to subscribe so that you don't miss any gist. Now back to business. Suspended in Sub-Saharan Africa and originally identified as the River Niger area, Nigeria is a marriage of multiple ethnic groups, different cultures, languages and well-endowed natural resources. The British had come to Niger area for trade and was internationally recognized as being in control of the area. And as at 1886, its control of the area, especially as its trade zone was sealed courtesy of the Royal Niger Company, led by Sir George Taubman Goldie. However, it was until the 31st of December 1899 that the Charter of Royal Niger Company was revoked by the British government and the sum of £865,000 was paid to the company as compensation. At that point, the British colonialists were officially in power. According to historical sources, Nigeria got its in 1897, courtesy of the then Governor General, Lord Frederick Lugard's mistress, Miss Flora Shaw, obviously drawing inspiration from the River Niger area. But it was in 1914 that Lord Lugard amalgamated the Southern and Northern Protectorate to form what is today known as Nigeria. But effectively, under the Commonwealth or in clear terms, we were just another conquered territory of of Great Britain. Shortly, the agitations for self-governance rent the air across Africa. The thought of independence was seditious to the British, they were not having it and came down on it hard. There easily lies the example of a fine young man who at the time had just returned to Nigeria and had picked up a job as editor of the African Morning Post in Gold Coast, now known as Ghana. His articles usually contained invectives about the colonial government and the rich Ghanaians who were unperturbed by the government's treatment because they benefited from it. What became of him? The British colonialists were so enraged by his audacity that they sent him to jail for sedition. His name? Namdi Azikwe. The man who would eventually become the Governor General of Nigeria at Independence and subsequently its Governor General. The British, smart, conny people, realizing how it was gradually losing influence because of the actions of Azikwe and his cohorts in the South, represented by Obafemi Awolowo, introduced new constitutions. First, it was the Macpherson Constitution, promulgated in 1951, which provided for a central house of representatives and regions. Then, black nationalists realized that this was not exactly independence and kept pressing towards the main goal, self-governance. It got then the Littleon Constitution of 1954, which created a fully federal system, comprising of the three geographical regions of Nigeria, the Southern Cameroons and the Federal Territory of Lagos. Subsequently, back and forth between the nationalist and the British overlords resulted in the internal self-government status granted to the western region led by Chief Obafemi Awolowo and the eastern region led by Azikwe in 1957. Wondering why I didn't mention the north? Yes. The northern region was not given internal self-government until 1959 because northerners feared that their region might lose its claims to an equal share in the operation and opportunities of the federal government if it was not given time to catch up with the educationally advanced south. Nigeria at 1960 the memories of the Independence Day on October 1, 1960 are invaluable and are better experienced, as one person will witness the celebrations at the now Tafawa Balewa Square in Obalende, Lagos, describes it thus. Just before the stroke of midnight, they switched off the light and lowered the British Union Jack. Then at midnight, the lights were switched back on and the green-white green stood majestically for all to see. 
This was followed by a volley of fireworks. Then the military band played and we rejoiced. In some parts of the country, Nigerians whined, dined and danced for weeks, especially after hearing the speech of Prime Minister Sa Abubakar Tafawa Balewa as part of its reads. At the time when our constitutional development entered its final phase, the emphasis was largely upon self-government. We, the electoral representatives of the people of Nigeria, concentrated on proving that we were fully capable of managing our own affairs, both internally and as a nation. However, we were not to be allowed the selfish luxury of focusing our interests on our own homes. In these days of rapid communications, we cannot live in isolation, apart from the rest of the world, even if we wished to do so. All too soon, it has become evident that for us, independence implies a great deal more than self-government. This great country, which has now emerged without bitterness or bloodshed, finds that she must at once be ready to deal with grave international issues. But analysts suggest that Nigeria was not really independent in 1960. They often refer to the concluding part of Tafar Balewa's speech that still fully recognized the Queen as head of Nigeria. That part read, and so, with the words, God save our Queen, I open a new chapter in the history of Nigeria and of the Commonwealth and indeed of the world. Enambi Azikwe, who assumed office as Governor General of Nigeria, was often regarded as the representative of the Queen and had to send a report on the state of the nation in 1961 and 1962. Even Nigeria's Supreme Court was not independent. It was initially subject to the appellate jurisdiction of the United Kingdom's Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. It means that if persons were not satisfied with the ruling of the court, they could take their appeal to the UK. All of this remained that way until 1963, when Nigeria eventually became a republic, got a new republican constitution and made the Supreme Court as the final court of appeal in the Nigerian legal system. Anamdi Azikwe also saw his role evolve from Governor General to Ceremonial President. Hence, while Nigerians collectively recognized 1960 as the year of independence, 1963 was when the country became free of all its links to the British government and became an independent sovereign. Learned something new? We've got more coming. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you'll be glad you did.